Hey S'mores, I'm Shannon Morse. Welcome to Morse Code. This is the third and final installment of my mini series about factory resetting and reinstalling Windows 10 on your PC. I know that everyone's requirements for PCs are totally different from each other's, so thank you to all of the folks who have provided their own tips in the comments on these three videos. I really appreciate it. If you missed the last two episodes where I show you how to prep and install Windows 10, there are some links down below in the description, which you can find by clicking on the title of this video. So on to today's video. This one is all about post reinstall. So everything that you would want to do to get back up and running as quick as possible, along with some tips to make the process much easier for future reinstalls. So let's go ahead and get started with number one. First things first, it is time to plug your PC back into the internet if you have not done so already. So get connected, plug in ethernet or enable Wi-Fi and update Windows 10 and let it discover all your hardware are your peripherals that need updated drivers. You may find that you need to go through a round of restarts in order to update everything, so just have a little bit of patience, let it do its thing, and then you should get sorted. Around now is when I usually go into the settings and edit custom settings while it's updating. I turn off discoverability for my PC. I make sure that Defender is running. Defender is Microsoft's free antivirus, and it's actually pretty good at catching issues, and it is recommended as general protection protection along with good internet and online security hygiene by most security professionals. Number two, I also go into my settings around now and I change anything that needs to be changed. So specifically that includes my priority displays and my monitors. I delete any programs that I'm never gonna use that are just bloatware with Windows 10. You can also grab your Windows 10 key at this point and enter it into the settings menu to register your operating system, assuming that Microsoft doesn't automatically add it for you. Sometimes it will automatically add it for you. So if that's the case, then you don't need to worry about that. Number three, you might want to create a new recovery drive in the event that changing your operating system from factory settings screws anything up once you've got all of your software and your apps and drivers and updates all installed. This will also save you time for future reinstalls too if you need to fix anything. So when you choose to do this is entirely up to you. You can do it before you update or after update, before you install drivers, after you install your drivers. It doesn't really matter to me. It's your preference. You can do this using any flash drive with a minimum of 16 gigs of storage, including the one that you use to reinstall Windows. You would just end up wiping it and putting this recovery drive on it instead. So this is different from the installation drive that you had created to reinstall Windows 10 in the first place. The install drive included a system image of Windows 10. The recovery drive will have a standard install plus any specific drivers for that computer included on it. I have linked to a tutorial down below from the Microsoft site to walk you through this process, but this is basically what it looks like. You click search, you type in create a recovery drive, hit enter, make sure backup system files to the recovery drive is selected, and then click next. Connect your USB drive, choose the correct drive, click next, and create. It does take quite some time, so just let it do its thing. Number four, now you can plug in that flash drive that had all of your installers and your drivers on it. This should also have your Ninite installer package on it, so double click on that. Let it run through its course through all of the software. When you click on that executable, it's going to find, download, and install each of the programs that you chose from the Ninite website. So the more that that you chose, the longer it will take, but it's a lot faster than going to each and every single one of those sites and downloading them all separately. Number five, now once that is done, move on to all the other third-party installers that you have saved. You know, the ones that Ninite doesn't necessarily install for you. All of those .msis and .exes and all those other files that should be installed. Go through each of those and then restart your PC as necessary. And now number six. Now you can move on to all of those drivers that you saved. You may find that you don't need access to all of those drivers that you'd backed up because Windows 10 was already able to find them and restore the drivers for you. But if any of those are missing, you do have them ready to go. Press start and type in device manager and hit enter. From here, you can right click on any of those devices or components that need drivers, and you will see an option to update driver. Click on that, choose manually install driver, select the folder where the driver is saved, which is probably on that flash drive from earlier, check include subfolders, and then click next, or you can let Windows find the drivers for you on your PC. 
Device Manager will search for and install the device driver if that one is newer than whatever one is currently installed. You can also do the same thing in the command prompt with this line. It's actually quite simple, but FYI, this will reboot your computer. So keep that in mind before you hit enter on this command. All you have to type in is pnputil forward slash add dash driver. And then in quotes, type in whatever drive letter your flash drive is, drivers backup star dot inf forward slash sub dirs for subdirectories forward slash install and then forward slash reboot. I will also put that down in the description so you can just copy and paste it. That will reinstall all of those updated drivers all at once and it will reboot the machine once it is done. If after rebooting everything looks good, you can then move on to the next step. And FYI, because I know this will be in the comments, my command looks a little bit different. The drive letter needs to match up with wherever you have backed up your drivers, which is probably on that flash drive. So make sure you know the driver name of that flash drive. And also I removed reboot from mine so I could successfully capture this onto video without my system rebooting afterwards. That's why you can see it here. I also only had one driver on here because this was a test run just to make sure that it worked correctly for capture. It did, and my 4K capture card driver was already updated automatically, so it did not need to use the driver off of my flash drive. Now moving on to number seven, turn off your PC. Plug all of your data drives back in. I'm assuming that's where you keep all your photos and videos and all your Word documents, your tax docs, whatever you have on those additional drives, go ahead and plug those back in. You should see all of your additional data drives automatically show up in your file directory and ready to access. At this point, if you haven't already, you can always change your user directory over to a new drive. You can import any necessary templates or profiles onto your programs that have been freshly installed. I saved all of those templates and profiles back to my flash drive. So I just have to open up those different programs and then I have to import the profiles or import the templates. You can also reconnect all of your programs and customize your PC however you like at this point. And you're done. There is no number eight. And while this process used to take a whole dang day, nowadays it just takes a couple of hours from start to finish because I've basically streamlined this operation for myself, which is great. The more time I can save, the more time I can make more videos for you. Before I leave, I did want to add in some additional tips from viewers from the last two videos. Velenici said one thing I always forget to do that I didn't see mentioned is deactivate any software that has an online activation system. For example, Silhouette studios if you have a cameo. It can only be active on two computers and if you forget to deactivate it then it will forever be active on a Windows install that no longer exists. Thank you so much for that comment and you are right. Honestly what do these companies expect you to do if your PC is stolen for example? They should just give you the option to deregister devices via an online portal. For example Adobe Premiere Pro which is the whole reason why I'm on Windows 10 they have an online option to deregister. So you can always go on there, deregister your old computer and register the new one. Lee Meyer says, one thing I have done is after setting up my computer after a fresh install is I create a disk image of my system. Since I have my data and user folders on a separate drive, very smart, I don't have to back them up. Then when I want to refresh my operating system, I just have to restore my disk image and my OS is set up again. Then I update my programs that need it and I create a new image with all of the updated programs. Puddles said what I always do with a new machine is clean install Windows, install the drivers, Windows update, Microsoft Store updates, and then I take a system image backup, backup settings, backup and restore on Windows 7 to an external hard drive. You're still using Windows 7? Then take another backup image once I get all of my applications installed. This way I can revert back to either the app's image or just the base Windows Plus drivers when I feel like it fairly quickly. Also good to take a new system image backup after doing this and updating it so that you don't have to wait for even more updates in the future whenever using the backup again. And I did want to mention this works with several different Windows versions as well. So thank you for that comment. Xavier Likes Technology says CCleaner also has an option to export every installed program in the uninstalled menu. 
And yes, Xavier, it does, but I did not mention Sea Cleaner because I don't trust it anymore. And maybe that's just my own paranoia. They did have a hack and some security vulnerabilities a few years back. So FYI, just in case you're like me and slightly paranoid, maybe it's better now, but I just don't want to recommend it on a video just in case there are still issues. Now, another comment that I saw, several folks recommended Chocolatey, which is a package manager for Windows. This one can also save a ton of time if you can create a script to set up all of your software however you deem necessary. And one I heard over and over was, just install Linux. Just install Linux. Why are you using Windows 10 when you could install Linux? Which does not take into account that some products like Adobe Premiere Pro do not have a Linux compatible option. And before I hear it in the comments, yes, I am aware of the alternative editing suites for Linux. I have tried them all, especially when I was working at Hack5, but not only does my editor also use Premiere for ThreatWire and we share project files back and forth, that makes it highly compatible and very easy to work with her. I am also very happy with how well Premiere performs on my Windows 10 PC. Nor does this take into account that some companies and some employees rely on Windows compatibility for their systems to run, or they cannot switch to Linux for their operating systems. Take into account restaurant point of sale or ATMs. I used to work at a bank and our ATM ran on Windows or transit software, for example. Also, Linux only accounts for 1.7% of my total views on my channel while over 20% are Windows. So I know most of you are using Windows and Android, but you can check out the hundreds and hundreds of videos I've done on Linux over on the Hack5 channel. Also, several folks mentioned during my part two video that you do not need to unplug from the internet in order to reinstall Windows 10 with a local account instead of a Microsoft account. So I will reiterate what I think that I'm pretty sure that I said in that video, whether you are watching this now or in the near future, Microsoft is constantly changing how they implement operating system installs and just disconnecting will help people who may not be running the same version of Windows 10 that I am here or in the near future. Whenever you find this video, it depends on the version and when you are installing. Plus just disconnecting internet saves me from having to make a whole series of tutorials for each and every single version of Windows or update to Windows 10 or future videos whenever Microsoft inevitably changes this process again. So just unplug it. It's easy. Comment below and let me know if you have any other pro tips to make this less painful of a task. Everybody has to reinstall Windows 10 eventually, so I hope that this series of videos helped you and hopefully will save you some time. If you are new here, subscribe to become a part of this amazing Morse Code S'mores community and check out my Patreon and buy me a coffee links down below to see how you can support this channel. Consider those tip jars if you like this video series. Thank you again so much to my S'mores for subscribing and watching. I'm Shannon Morse and I'll see you soon. Bye y'all.